In this video, we'll take a look at smart comps and how you can apply multiple textures by just clicking on one texture swatch. Before we do anything, make sure you have the latest version of Ray Dynamic Texture installed. You can check this by clicking on the gear icon. Here I can see I have version 1.0.4. To check for updates, you just go to the AE Scripts website, click on your name, and then go to My Downloads and Licenses. And then here you can find Ray Dynamic Texture. And then when you click on the download link, you can find the latest version and check if that's the one that you have installed. Now let's talk about smart comps. You can download them here from my resources page on georegulus.com. Once you click on that, you get two options. You can get the smart comps, including the textures, which is like half a gigabyte, or you can get them without the textures, and then you'll just get the compositions with the expressions. Now I already downloaded this, so let's jump over to the downloads folder and then drag these into my texture library. And then um, I can just get rid of the downloads window and then import this into my project. And now when I refresh the script, uh, it will become available to me. You can see that my library is getting bigger as more textures have become available on the resources page. And again, it's a good idea to keep one place, like a texture library, where you can store all your textures, so that all the projects that you work in can reference that one folder. And if a connection in your project breaks, you can easily find the textures you're looking for with a simple search and at least they're not somewhere lost on the desktop or still in the downloads folder. All right, what is a smart comp? Well, these following compositions have multiple textures inside. When you apply any of these compositions as a texture to a selected object, a random texture will be chosen and displayed. So these are the three textures, and this is the random selection of all the textures that are included in this composition. We'll get into how to set it up in a little bit. Let me first show you how this works. So I'm just going to create a new composition and I'm going to need some shape layers. So I'm just going to import my default assets as well. And then refresh the script and let's grab three circles. And then change the position. All right, let's switch back to the smart comps. Okay, so here you can find the three compositions that we just talked about. So the first one picks a random animated texture. The second one picks a random still texture. And then the third one plays random textures. So let's first apply the animated textures. Oh, and I'm also using the set matte mode here, by the way. If you haven't seen the other video yet on how to use it, go check it out. Because set matte is really my preferred way to texture in most situations, so. All right, so I'm going to click on this texture and that will give me three different textures, although I just textured with one texture here. And these are all animated and they're looping. All right, let's undo this and let's check out the other one. So this is just a still texture. Uh, let's check out the third one. This is the same as the one before, but it comes with a texture per second slider. So if you change this value to say two, you can see that in one second, this left circle's texture changes twice. And if you end up with some of the same textures and you wanna switch up the random seed, oh, this is a good example, then you just open the expressions on the timer map on this layer, and there you can find a variable that's called seed. And this number generates a random number sequence that this composition uses to pick a different texture. So if we change this number to a different number, a different texture will be picked. And if you don't like to have this variable up here, you can also just grab a slider and then drag that on the layer here. And then instead of defining this as a number, you can just link it to that slider. And then now this slider controls that value. Now, if you wanna make sure that happens by default, you obviously have to set that up in the texture palette so that when you texture with this texture, the slider also comes in just like this slider came in. Okay, now let's take a look at how to create some of these textures. So let's go back to the composition and read these instructions here. So for this to work properly, make sure you set this up in the following way. So there's a couple of rules that you have to keep in mind when you create a composition that has these textures inside of it. So the first rule is that every texture needs to be exactly the same length. So here you can see that every texture is exactly two seconds long. And then the second rule is that all the textures need to be sequenced so that they don't overlap. 
Uh, the third rule is that the composition length should be the same as the total length of all the textures. And then the fourth rule is that the amount of textures should equal the amount of layers. Uh, because the expression that picks a random texture for you looks at the amount of layers and thereby defines how many textures there are. And then it also divides the total length of the composition by the amount of textures so that it knows how long each texture is. And I'm explaining this to you so that you kind of understand how this works in the background. And we'll get into the code in a little bit. All right, so let's go back to the Smart Comps palette. If you open up the timer map for this layer, you can find that there's an expression in here that does all the random picking for you. So every time you apply this texture, it picks a random texture for you. Now, if you don't want to think about the code, you can just copy over this timer map property to your composition and also copy over the slider effects if you have them applied to your layer. Now, applying different textures is pretty cool, but you can also do this with properties. Because what if you want to have just one texture, but slightly offset the position, scale, rotation, or opacity, for example? So let's go back to composition one, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's select these layers again, and then let's apply this texture. And you can see that this is the texture set random position. So when I click on this, you can now see that every texture gets a random position applied. So let's undo this and let's look at the next one. So this is a random scale. So when I apply this, every texture gets a slightly different scale. And then same for a rotation. Every texture gets a slightly different rotation. And then same for opacity. Now, these expressions are actually really simple, and I'll show you how they work. And in order to understand this best, let's look at the rotation because it just has one value. Now, it's a little hard to see this expression because it's just all text. So what I'm going to do is copy it. And if you haven't seen this yet, this is Expressionist, which is a legitimate code editor for After Effects. And in here, it's much easier to build expressions because you get a lot of the code editor features with it. All right, let's take a look at this expression. So we have two variables at the top. The first one is offset and it's set to 90. This means that the offset is going to be 90 degrees. Then the next variable is seed. And this number is going to generate a random number sequence. And then down here we have seed random. So the first value that this function holds is this random number sequence. And again, if you change this number, you'll get a different random sequence. So that's how you can get a different result. Now the second value in here is set to true. And what this means is that the random number that will be picked uh, will stay the same over time. So if I turn that to false, every frame there will be a different random number. All right, and then we get to the core of the expression, which is really all it is. Uh, what we do is we take value, which is this value, which could be anything, whatever you set it to. So we take the value, and then we add the random function to this. And the random function like this on its own, it generates a number from 0 to 1. Another thing you could do is actually type 10 in here, and now it will generate a random number from 0 to 10. Another thing you can do is uh, type two values in here, like 5 and 10, and now it will generate a random number between 5 and 10. Now again, because we have this set to true, that random number is going to stay the same number over time. Now instead of putting these values in here, what I've done here is I put the offset value in here. And as the first value, I put the same offset value, but then I made that value negative. So what this will do, it will generate a random number between minus 90 and plus 90. So it could be 40, but it could also be minus 40. So even though we're adding this function to the current value, this number can also end up being a negative number, subtracting from the original value. So we can really use this number 90 to determine how much offset there should be. Now, if you don't want to get into the coding of it, you could just copy and paste these properties on your own textures, and then it will work, as long as you know how to tweak that offset value. All right, that's it. I hope smart comps and these expressions can become a useful component to your workflow. Check out some of the other tutorials I have on this channel and subscribe if you want to stay up to date. That's all for now. Take care.